Hi, my name is Michael Berger, and I'm the head of research and development at Consavit, a smart buildings company located in Australia. And I will be presenting on real time model predictive control with digital twins and edge computing technologies applied to chilled water plants for air conditioning and refrigeration. Curtailing CO2 emissions and global warming is one of the biggest challenges of our time. Reducing energy usage of chilled water plants would contribute to that goal. In chiller plants, variable speed drives, or VSD, have been introduced to improve the part load efficiency of the equipment, and they are now almost ubiquitous in new plants around the world. The introduction of these VSDs has presented many new variables that can be adjusted by the supervisory control systems that impact the power usage of the overall plant. This can be seen on the typical chiller plant schematic on the bottom left, with VSDs at almost every equipment, and we can see on the bottom right other efforts published in the past to use simulations to find the optimal control variables. However, those were done offline using rule of thumbs control strategies that may not generalize well to different system sizes, climates, and so on. The proposed approach here is to use real-time live control, model predictive control, to find the minimum chiller and condenser water pumps power usage by varying decision variables such as the cooling load and the condenser flow per chiller. The mathematical formulation is indicated below and note that there are limits on the loads and flows for each chiller that can be configured based on manufacturer data as well as the constraint on the sum of the chiller loads to be equal to the total target load of the plane. The loads are distributed between chillers by varying the living chill water temperature per chiller, while still maintaining the overall living chill water temperature and load target for the overall plant. You can see the models of each uh, component. The chiller model are using as variables the cooling load, entering condenser water temperature, living chill water temperature, and condenser flow. And the condenser pump model use the condenser flow as input variable. Note that this optimization can be extended to find the optimum number of chillers as well by repeating the optimization several times with different number of chiller and finding the case that minimizes further the power usage of the plan. Machine learning results of those mod equipment models were validated with two separate anonymized sites showing high accuracy as can be seen on the table on the bottom left with R squared values of 0 0.95 or above showing a good fit between the models and the data, as can also be seen in the graphs um, of the chiller model that shows the trend of the chiller power usage as a function of the input variables and a good fit with the side data. And similarly, with a pump uh, model on the graph on the right, showing for a specific pump the predicted and actual power in regard to the flow. These models were then used to run the optimization that was described earlier. And initially, offline simulations were run in order to assess the validity of the premise, as well as the savings potential of the approach. We can see two examples here. On the left, for the first site, site A, we have a case where condenser flow optimization only is uh, looked at, where we can see on the two first graphs on the top, that we, we have the optimum condenser water flow that minimizes both the chiller and the pump power for a load of 30% and a load of 70%. And for each case, the optimum condenser water flow is actually found to be different. This highlights that a typical strategy that would keep the condenser flow set point constant may not be optimum at all time. Additionally, below we can see the calculated savings compared to a case where the condenser flow was kept at design value at all times. We can see Good savings are up to 25%, depending on the conditions of entering current water temperature and load on the chiller. So these show quite high savings potential. Secondly, on site B on the right, we can see a case where we have two chillers running at the same time in the simulation with um, the load per chiller and the current flow per chiller showing the optimum for different values of plant load. So we can see how for different plant load, we have different optimums for each chiller for both the load and the condenser water flow. And optimizing all this together holistically, we see at the bottom right, the, the potential power saving percent, which is also quite high. 
when the approach was implemented with the intent to operate automatically on site, on the edge, on low cost embedded controls platform in real time. The advantage is that there will be no requirement for a cloud platform, which will have ongoing maintenance fees, require uh, internet connection, as well as off-site analysis. This results in a lower cost, improved cybersecurity profile, more efficient data processing, as well as increased reliability due to the absence of uh, internet connection. The hardware platform that was used is a Raspberry Pi 3 plus compute module based platform. It's a four core CPU and only one gigabyte of RAM. It's a relatively low powered, relatively low cost option that can be deployed on site. The solution for the optimization is to use an interior point method for nonlinear programming, which for the number of variables we are handling here is very fast converging with relatively low computing power requirements. This was used for both the machine learning, which means to find the minimum um, error for the models and the best coefficient for the models, but also for the optimization problem to find the best set point. This uh, approach was suitable for both cases and allows both of them to run on site on a low powered controller. We can see on the table on the bottom left that we run some cases with two, five, and 10 chillers of finding the optimization, um, the best set point. And we can see that it's always below 70 milliseconds, which is more than enough for controls, which would require to be more in the seconds range. Now that the machine learning was also designed to be able to run regularly over time so that it captures the performance variation in equipment, especially performance degradation over time, and adapt the optimization on that. The solution was designed to be a real-time direct control of equipment using common high-level communication protocol and to be integrated within an existing killer plant controls hardware and software solution called Plant Pro, so that it leverages those existing um, platform and focus on the optimization. It was actually after several prototypes and site trials implemented in the commercial product with a full suite of user interface and flexible configuration of various killer plant configuration. We can see some results on site, in particular of a real-time operation. Three sites were looked at, which are anonymized site A, B, and C, which are in, dif were in different climates, showing that the solution has potential to be generalizable. We can see a couple of examples. On the top for site A, we spot check some values of power for, for a condition with constant uh, load and temperatures with using the optimal condenser water flow that was computed by the algorithm and comparing with forcing the uh, design condenser flow of about 80 liter per second. We can see here that in this specific case, we do find significant power reduction on the total power of the chiller and the pump with only 35 kilowatt for the optimal case and 46 for the standard conventional case. We can see as well, at the bottom for site C, a case with two chillers running, chiller two and chiller three. And the optimization finding and applying, this is actually graphs from real measured data on site, applying different load percentage on each chiller, finding that it's more efficient to push chiller three to a higher load compared to chiller two uh, in terms of load proportion. And this results on the graph uh, on the right of the living chiller to temperature being different for each chiller while still trying to maintain the overall plant chill water set point of 11 degrees here. So we can see that the uh, solution operated on site reliably and uh, applied the theoretical concept that we saw earlier. And finally, we computed the energy savings from site using measurement and verification studies following guiding principle from the International Performance Measurement and Verification Protocol that gives guidelines on how to account properly for changes in conditions if they occur. So we did find good savings of 3.6% to 7.1% depending on the site, which are quite high considering that no mechanical equipment was actually changed, but only control strategies. We can see on the bottom for site B and site C, the plant COP, which is a measure of efficiency, increasing in the case with optimal controls. Thank you very much for your time. This was real-time model predictive control with digital twins and edge computing technologies by Conservit.